In our society, we're encouraged to aspire to ownership of a large home. But what happens when you own that large home with a tennis court and swimming pool and realize that it's not making you happy? Today, we've traveled to the Hawke's Bay to meet a wonderful and inspiring young family who traded in society's dream for one of their own. Hey, Hello. Matt. Good to meet you, mate. Yeah, nice. Vice versa. Hi, Ilza. Nice How are you? Nice to meet you. Welcome. This container looks great. Oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> we yeah, love yeah, it. We love it. <laughs> Tell yeah. me a little bit about how you actually came to be living in a couple of shipping containers. We bought this big five bedroom house and we were living in it and working constantly to um, maintain it. And we just thought, this isn't right. Yeah, we bought our first house and it was a two bedroom, well, one and a half bedroom, like little mm. deceased estate in Auckland and we renovated that and then we found out we're having another baby and so we decided we needed more space and so we bought a three bedroom house and we renovated that and sold it and we moved to Hawke's Bay and the next step was sort of like, obviously a bigger house because we were going to have another baby <laughs> and so we ended up with a five bedroom three, bath three bathrooms yeah. like formal lounge it was a tennis court and a pool and we sort of thought that that's the epitome of what you're supposed to do I guess and then after living and working that house for about a year and we realized how much work goes into mowing all those lawns and oh mate it was just it was took up all of our time it did. effort it was busy and it was it was hard work but it was just more the fact that we had like three little children that just wanted to spend time with us and mm. we didn't have time because we had to get these jobs done like that's when I was on YouTube and I saw your channel and like <laughs> got inspired I guess and yeah Matt had it lucky I was like just sat him down one night we watched a few and he was like let's go and so with a bit of graph paper off we went right yeah. design the home put the house on the market and, and uh, we were Going ho then. <laughs> People thought we were nuts, but we're really happy. It was the best oh, decision man. we've ever made. Yep. Well, I love to know that I'm partly responsible for this yeah, creation because totally. it's really incredible. <laughs> now, this is actually two 40-foot shipping containers that have been slightly offset from one another. Correct, yep. So they're two high cube 40-footers. This one in particular, we've cut the roof right out and pitched it up. Um, we've obviously used steel framing and then inset with our container cutouts to fill in the blanks and that is made uh, a good high pitched roof and that actually works well because we have our solar panels on the top there because we're our off grid system and it works, yep. works a treat. And you've mentioned that these containers are off the grid, can we talk about that? Sure can, we, you, so we basically we have a 6 kilowatt solar system, uh, we've got 18 panels on the roof and then we've got our 8 260 amp hour batteries here for our, our storage, battery storage. Um, as you can see, they're low maintenance, they're nice and dirty. <laughs> we never really have to go in there, which is quite nice. <laughs> so that is actually a huge solar system. We've got power to burn, Yeah, it's great. We have more power than we need really, and if we were connecting back into the grid, that, that would be cool, but um, with the way that we chose to live was just to have enough to live, and then the company that put the system in for us, it, we were there first, and so they were determined to prove that it could be done and it could be done really easily and it has it's been great for us what about water collection here we had a, a water bore connection right here so we plumbed into it so we're basically yeah basically off grid so where did the shipping containers come from are they new containers or did they have a life before so these are wind and watertight second hand containers so we, we purchased these obviously they've got a bit of a history behind them and we've just repurposed them did this. a lot of panel beating. We yes. did a lot of panel beating. We were pretty lucky that they came in pretty good condition. We've had before wind and watertight and they were only just watertight. Whereas mm. these ones have been really they were really quite good quality when we got them. And the dents we feel just add to character. Totally. <laughs> I absolutely agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, the containers look amazing from the outside and I'm really keen to get a tour and see what you've done on the inside. Come, Come on, on in. So this is the mud room, so this is the, the dirty end of the house and for a tiny house or a small house we thought that this was a bit of a luxury but it, it has ended up being so practical. The linen cupboard and everything fits in into here oh, and wow. just a bit of extra pantry storage and then 
washing machine and in that little deep freeze which means that like all the dirt comes in comes in here everything just gets washed and popped away without like mucking up the rest of the house and the inverter and the power and everything comes through here so a real practical space for us such a good idea including a space like this because you're right otherwise if you're going straight into the house you don't get that break from the weather you've got yeah, nowhere right. to put sort of muddy and wet stuff yeah, yeah. Yep. and three kids this is really a mud room <laughs> but yeah. yeah works well for us totally does yeah. so this is our front door come in oh this is lovely you can definitely feel the additional space that you get from actually having those two containers stacked side by side oh sure keen it makes a huge difference eh? it means that you can have a proper lounge and a full-size kitchen in one space which when you had them just the width of a single container didn't really feel like good for either so tell me about the design of the container and how you've laid everything out okay so you just walked right into our galley kitchen so as you can see this is our our kitchen which has got ample storage um you'll notice when you walk throughout the house we've used a, a lot of copper which we we seem to love and we actually feel makes it feel warm so we love it absolutely that yeah. sink is so beautiful is that an old hot water cylinder uh yeah it was originally it was a hot water cylinder and then we scored it as a big old plant pot i just cut it down and flared it and put a plug in it and there's our kitchen sink and a tremendous amount of bench space to work on here oh yeah totally Having a big kitchen was really important to us because mm. I love to cook, but we've got a young family and we have sharing meals and, you know, was kind of one of the biggest design things for us when we were laying out how big the kitchen was going to be. It was, it's a luxury, I guess, <laughs> but we had to have it. And then the way that the whole kitchen sort of slides up against this wall, you've created a large open space for your living room. Yeah, it's worked really well. As you can see, we got a nice, good size, comfortable lounge. We can face the TV or we can turn around and face the fire in the winter. And a uh, good couch makes a, makes a difference too. Good good flow, good radius on the corner. I also found this and yeah. it's a good score. So how easy was it actually to join the two containers together? And how does that work for all of your electrical wiring and plumbing and all of that sort of stuff? Yeah, oh, piece of cake really. Um, because I'm an engineer, it's, uh, it's my kind of trade. So it's just a case of cutting a hole bridging it with some good structural steel and this is this is bolted with it with a bit of a gasket silicon sealant through the flange faces and then we've got a, a seal over the top and that's made it completely watertight and it's a piece of cake really a lot of people are quite worried about thermal bridging when you're dealing with steel structures how does it work for sort of moisture and insulation and everything in this space we use spray from insulation for inside the walls yeah yeah because steel doesn't breathe you have to have a you have to get, get sort out that thermal break so you can't have a cavity in there where condensation can condensate <laughs> so you have to use this uh, non-porous insulation so it's the only proper way to do it and then you've got the kids room through there i see yeah kids room three kids one room <laughs> very impressive yeah initially we scored all these doors from an old uh, albert hotel which is an old hotel here in town obviously stripped them and then split them in half because we couldn't have one big intrusive door and we didn't like the looks of cavity sliders that was too new for us so we wanted to use the recycled thing so hence these nice little doors so how did you lay the space out to work for three kids well we've got one girl and two boys so it, it turned out that the mezzanine in the middle with um our daughter up the top with the curtain that closes gives her enough privacy and she's really happy and content up there and then we made the boys beds just slightly narrower than a normal single bed so that they had a bit of room to sort of tuck their toys underneath and their shoes and all that kind of stuff which means it's less clutter and it just it really does work the kids love it we were a bit worried about having three kids in one bedroom but it turns out that they love hanging out together so yeah it works a treat actually yes yeah. it works and then what do we have over here so this is the bathroom what can I have a look very nice here you can really see the height of the ceiling coming into its own can't you oh totally it actually really works it makes a small space seem big Big yeah. <laughs> so we've got the uh, we've got the Japanese soak tub there so we can have all, all three kids in the bath at the same time if we really wanted to which we quite often do. I love how you've continued the theme of all of the copper fittings everywhere because it yes. just brings a lot of warmth and kind of rustic character yeah, into the space. Definitely. Well, that, that particular sink is what actually started us on our copper. You found that, eh? It's, found it's a bargain on Trade Me. And um, we thought, ah, oh, this would be a good kitchen sink. And it turned up and we're like, oh, it's uh, quite small. It was only 25 bucks, but it was like the beginning of a very expensive um, fitting for the yeah. house because <laughs> then everything had to be copper because I loved it so much yeah. I wanted to use it. And then you've got a composting toilet here as well. Yes, yeah. composting loo. So not quite a bucket with sawdust. Um, that one is 
got a, the air ventilation system and it was what we could find on the market three mm. nearly four years ago now it's been so great it's really mm. a lot easier to use than we thought it was going to be a lot less smelly than we thought it was going to be and mm. yeah we wouldn't go back should we explore the other side of the house yeah <laughs> We've got a drying rack above the fireplace um, for the sake of winter. Good to dry your, your clothes inside. And to and not have it on there. the floor, just freeing up the floor space. It makes yeah. such a big difference. And the house is so warm when you have the fire going there. In two hours, washing's dry and job done. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. And then over here is our dining room. This was supposed to be the master bedroom, but sharing a meal at the end of the day, us all together, was mm. huge for us, right? Yeah. And that's why we went up with a smaller room for us and a bigger dining um, booth, which has like loads of storage, extra sleeping bags and blankets and um, games and a bookshelf. And yeah. And then we had the staircase, which makes for a great wardrobe. <laughs> so all your clothes are stored in here? Yeah. Well, all the hanging sort of clothes. We've got a set of drawers up, upstairs, but yes. And tell me about the design of your sleeping loft. <laughs> Well, there wasn't a lot of design in that. Like, we was figuring this out how space. much space did we have to have, like, to for, to make it workable, and then we, we went from there. But also, the clearance from the top, from the outside, to transport it around had to be like we would only be able to go so high. So yes, so that that, that really set did. our pitch. Yeah. Basically, the the overall height was set for legal height on a low loader transporter, and that's what set our pitch of the roof. Yeah. It and it work. feels like up there is a like a it a, feels like a safe closed in space which works well for sleeping and then down here there's plenty of light and air coming through and it, yeah hmm. it was a good compromise <laughs> yeah. and then you've got this lovely kind of open area to your outdoor space as well yeah we felt it was quite important when you're living a bit smaller to have a good indoor outdoor flow because you live quite differently say big bifold doors there opening folds on the other side and it just creates a lovely space so how long have you been living in this home now nearly three years nearly three yeah. nearly three years yeah that um was quick. It, was, it has it has it's gone really it has gone really fast it's actually the longest that we've lived in any house since we've been married yeah <laughs> yep. and we've been married over 10 years now <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's very easy to live in definitely it's a uh, very easy to live low maintenance simple love it You've moved into this home from a much larger home. Yeah. What was your downsizing process like? Uh, it wasn't too hard. I went to work and Elsa did it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> we, we, had, we, had five, we had five bedrooms to downsize into sort of technically one and a half. So um, we trade made and gave away and just got rid yeah. of so, so much stuff. And on a whole, downsizing was very freeing. Living in this house, has completely changed our lives right oh so yes. we did it as a test to see how much space we would need and we understood that we it would have to change and evolve as our children got older but what we've realized is that we don't need that massive mcmansion anymore like we are really happy to live with less and mm. we and yeah our quality of life is just so much better because of it definitely so what about the cost of building this home this cost us about 150000 That's all materials and parts, um, but obviously that doesn't include a lot of our labour and things like that, so yeah. It was nine months of hard slog building it because everything mm. was done, like we just, we hadn't been inside another container house until we were pretty much finished. And yeah. <laughs> I hadn't actually been inside a container until, until the ones that, these ones arrived at Matt's yard and I opened up the door and I was like, it's so hot in here and it's absolutely tiny. What have we done? But it was too late. <laughs> yeah, we made it work. Yeah, totally. Well, there's no doubt about it. You have managed to turn these two 40 foot containers into an incredible home for your family. Thank you so much for sharing it with Thank me. Thank you. Cheers for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you. Looking at a shipping container, it really is quite utilitarian. It's a cold, hard metal box and quite far removed from something that you'd consider homey. This couple though, have taken a couple of those boxes and truly turned them into something beautiful using salvaged materials and timbers all to create a wonderful family home.